up, listeners? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of HBR. Today, we're joined by legendary photographer Jonathan Mannion. This man has dominated the hip hop photography scene for the last 25 years, shooting everyone's album cover from Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt to 21 Savage's upcoming sophomore LP. And while we do talk about his illustrious career at great length, Jonathan also opens up about his time working for fashion photographer Richard Avedon, Instagram photography, licensing your work, the responsibilities of a documentarian, what's next over the next 25 years for Jonathan Mannion, and so much more. Enjoy the episode, and don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and follow us at Hypebeast Radio. Today I have a legend here, living legend, he's still alive, Jonathan Goat emoji. Mannion. Goat emoji. Goat, Goat emoji. emoji. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, um, I think the best way to kind of describe you or you know your career in just a quick you know quick gif is that I I met you ages ago. I um, I know you said nice to meet you a moment ago, but I met you in a uh, agenda Las Vegas a couple years ago wow. and yeah. um, at a uh, TI booth or something. Yeah, for a coup, I did yeah. a collaboration with them ages Absolutely. ago. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And uh, I. I took a picture with you, I posted on Instagram, and my caption was like, this guy photographed half of your favorite rap albums, and... I, I vaguely remember that, and that was such a crazy moment, and in my first sort of, like, experience of that level of a shit show, right? you know, oh, that yeah, was yeah. happening, and yeah. like... And like, I, yeah. maybe a few moments later, it couldn't have been, like, more than an hour, just, I got a comment from you, half? With like a question mark, and I was like, "Oh no, no, edit, edit. How do I? How do I?" You know, I there are this? days that you just have to talk that talk, man. You know what I mean? Most of the time, I'd rather be humble and let the work talk. And then every once in a while, you got to step in the arena and throw a jab, just to like let yourself know that you're alive. Absolutely. I threw a jab this morning. Yeah, <laughs> I did. It might have been a hook, but uh, but real subtle, real subtle. Yeah. Those no. that those that know what I think about behind the scenes. Yeah. They no, know. absolutely. They know. Um, yeah, Jonathan, you've pretty much photographed almost everybody from Reasonable Doubt to, I mean, could you tell, what was the last album cover? I mean, I know that you did, like, the recent Khaled, uh, uh, Gucci sure. Man. Um, so what was the last cover? What would be the, the last most cover recent? last cover got released uh, yesterday or the day before Snap. for LMA. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, Trip, Boot Up, everybody knows her. She's making a run for the uh for the throne at the moment and uh yeah we we had an incredible session in la um you know the team decided they wanted to to go for it you know and it's it's great you know it's like you know that was really the bread and butter of of my career all the way along was album covers it's what i like i sought even more than um, magazine covers because i always wanted to be attached directly to the music i felt like that was going to be the lasting um sort of image that attaches to that moment and defines it. I mean, reasonable doubt, close your eyes. Oh yeah, I know that the image as much as I know the music. DMX in the blood, you know, some of the, you know, greatest hits of of the album covers that I've delivered, but it's always fused with the music, whereas magazines, yes, they can be memorable, but they're sort of like up for a month and then down and gone. You know, people that are, you know, the the super fans of of hip hop and and the movement they can go to those images and reference it and remember it and maybe give a date even but for the most part the album covers and the album packaging and those images because they were relentlessly thrown down people's throat right um they were the ones that were the lasting sort of message message that stuck but um what else i did uh i did 21 savage i just shot his new album um which is coming coming soon uh to a to a something near you, fire, fire. You've heard some of it. Images are, are I heard oh, none of okay, the music. Okay, all right. Yeah, you don't you don't typically hear the music before. You kind of do you get to do you know the concept or the album title or like how do you how do you even go into it? This particular one was kind of walking into it blind, and I just kind of crafted a set of images that I felt would give him, you know, sort of the presence that he deserved in the marketplace as one of the loudest new voices out, and right. you know. Um, but I wanted to put kind of the Mannion stamp on it. So, like, yeah. it was this round as much me as it was him, I right. think, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I didn't – look, the most uh, incredible way to do a project is to listen to the music. 
for me to scribble, you know, legal pads full of notes, go repurpose it, deliver it to the artist. Like, here's the 20 ideas that I thought would hit based on what I heard or like little nuggets of lyrics that I dropped, like Big Boy from Outkast. Right. He always allows me to hear the full album. Like, it's time to do it again. Come into studio, listen to it, scribble, come back, and we do 20 shots that are epic that seam up the, you know, the music with the moment and the visuals. So, um, but, but oftentimes I walk in blind, like flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. They were like, yo, you're not going to be able to talk to him. Just show up. You can do whatever you want. I was like, whatever I want. <laughs> I was like, What's the name okay, of the <laughs> I'm going to go for it. I just want you to know that, you know, yeah. and you know, and it was a moment of bravery and artistic creation and I had to sell it in, but he believed it, you know, and he was like, all right, I'm going with you. I trust you because you did Dark and Hell is Hot, me with the dogs for where my dog's at. Like, all right, it's crazy, but I'm going to go with you and I'm going to trust you. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to let you down. Let's go. So it's a full range. You right. know, I've walked in totally blind to sessions and we create and allow divine intervention to kind of take over. And then sometimes it's fully crafted A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know. As you mentioned, for you. It's about capturing the spirit of an artist at a particular point in time, usually for an album. I want to know how your mentor, legendary fashion and portrait photographer Richard Avedon, influenced your approach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think as a general rule, like I wanted to come up with something that was authentic mm. to the moment, to the person, to the message that we wanted to kind of like deliver. Um, you know, not really knowing anything like being a good human being and attaching to people and having meaningful conversations. I went to Kenyon College. You know, I was a psychology major, so I love what makes people tick in general. You know, photo, I took it only one year at school, you know, but I found like this is a kind of a perfect blend doing photography, having these conversations, documenting it. It's never going to be the same as that moment that we captured ever again. Five minutes later, a year later, five years later, they're never going to be the same. History does never, it never repeats itself. You know, it's always a new version. Themes, yeah, absolutely, but never the moment. Um, and so kind of understanding that and then having this, this you know, incredible um, master photographer and the knowledge that he was able to kind of impart sort of just firmed up like, okay, yeah, it is about the connection and that, you know, and the sitting and what is the emotion that he wanted to pull out of somebody to take that defining photo. And obviously he was fully imposing his will. If he wanted the session to be a happy session, he went in all light and accommodating and complimentary. But if he wanted to create sort of a tension, some, you know, an artist or whoever he was, photograph, writer, painter, whatever, and he wanted tension and he wanted that like fear in somebody's eyes, he would go in and he would just bark orders at all of his staff and create that, that vibe. Like, you know, today we're in here pretty calm, but I could come in agitated and be like, oh God, we gotta, we gotta step up, we gotta do it, I gotta ask the questions more efficiently or whatever. Like, you set the pace of what you want to achieve right. and make somebody believe in the moment, you know, um, that you're trying to capture, yeah. you know? And I think that's, that's the beauty of, of the collaborative process that is photography, or what at least it should be at the highest level. A lot of people in the office wanted to get your take on Instagram photography and its place in the music industry, but I kept wondering if you're too legendary enough to even worry about it. You know, it's, such, it's a tricky question, man, and, and there's so many kind of levels to the response. Mm -hmm. You know, there are photographers that I, I wouldn't even allow on my set you know what I mean? To like light a shot, let alone like shoot or whatever <laughs> that have a, a hundred, you know, like a hundred thousand, 200, 300,000 more followers than I do, you right. know? And that, and that's when you're just like, you know, you can step back from social media and say, you know, what is the impact of the images that you're putting out? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not the likes and the followers. It, that's nice. It, it does, you know, stroke the ego and whatever. Like, oh man, I got like 5,000 likes on this picture. It makes you feel good. Like, right. you know, but that's sort of like, ultimately though, if none of that existed, how do you feel about the work that you created? You know, I think that's sort of my litmus test of like, did I do it? Did I deliver today? Like, yeah, I'm really proud of that. Or I would show that, you know, in a gallery as like, you know, sort of a choice photo. But, you know, again, it's like, 
I just I go to knowledge of craft and being a professional photographer. Anybody can say they're a photographer on Instagram, make a page, Schleppy McGrew photography, and go and shoot a bunch of rappers and color correct it, you know, to to an inch of its life. Right. And they're a photographer. And I think it's about, you know, people being knowledgeable about the degrees of greatness that's being delivered. Right. You know, it's sort of like, do you know even what you're looking at? Like, who are the people that are like, oh, man, you're the greatest ever. Like, what's your point of comparison? Right, yeah. You know, it's like, I could line up, you know, name 50 of any object, right, that have some sort of, like, little change. They're like, teddy bears or sneakers or whatever. And I can pick out the ones that I like and why I like it. I mean, going specifically to this example, like, if you put 50 photos in front of me, I can rank order them. Or, or even my own. And I think that that becomes now about uh, like curation and, and do you really know what you're looking at? Do you really know what's good, great, magnificent, beyond like unparalleled, you know? Um, and, and I think it's like we got to know what we're looking at now. You know, I think with so many images coming at us constantly, everything is influenced. I'm influenced hugely by what I see. And, you know, it sends me down certain pathways, you know, right. but uh, but I think really it's about and like we really need um, uh, these important creators. And again, you can't tell anybody like how to feel, but I think creators need to have some parameters that we just talk about, just like just keep perspective. And again, we're not telling anybody what to like or not like or there's no better than there's no good. There's no bad. There's none of that. They're all experiences in how you feel. So, like, you know, something that I might like, somebody else is like, it's a little crap. I mean, even my own work. I'm sure there's people like, man, he's okay. He's cool. <laughs> like, he's whatever. But, <laughs> you know? And then there's some that are like, dude, I picked up a camera because of you. And right. I think that that's a much richer compliment for me that I've somehow inspired somebody to explore their own creative right. um, sort of experience right. you know, with the craft. It's almost knowing that these photos are intended to live on Instagram and they should be, they should be consumed on Instagram. They should be liked on Instagram, but you know, that's, that's where they live. That's where they should be. That's almost, great. Right? You know, look, I, I did an amazing um, thing with Adidas um, for NM, the NMDs, right? They sent me out for two days. They did it on the West coast with uh, Estevan. Um, and uh, you know, they're like, you got to, in two days, literally a 24 hour period, we're going to, set you loose on the streets of New York. You can sort of curate, if you will, the experience. So I ended up photographing each one of these kids. Some were kids that were still in, uh, um, you know, in college at like NYU. Some were out there with, you know, 300,000 followers, which is more than I have. <laughs> I'm at a buck oh seven. So if you could tell people, get those followers, up, followers guys. follow them, please. You, please follow me. Just, just make me feel good. Like, you know, Unfollow me if I post some like nonsense or whatever, but like yo, I'm I'm trying to get to like 207. You got you in a week. You got we're, me. Yeah, we're putting a link in. Yeah, we're we're linking out. We're embedding. I'll do like IG. some giveaways or whatever. <laughs> like I'll do whatever you guys want. You want some stuff? I'll give you some stuff. We're guys, gonna talk he about it. the followers. Listen, my God, <laughs> he's he's the photographer. I'm out you here trying. To. You know, <laughs> make an old man feel good, man. I'm about to be 40. Follow me on my birthday, man. If I get to two uh, two o. Oh, Let's say 208 by December 3rd. Huh. Checks the watch. What should we do? We could do we could do like Christmas gifts one a day every day. Yeah. Of like some prints or I artifacts mean, or man. something. Yeah. We got to do something. A uh, Jonathan Minion print? That's I'm here to give, man. I'm here to give. <laughs> Let's just give it all back, you know, here. Have it. We're going to adorn the You got some wall space in here? It's, bro, We're going to figure it out. Yes. Um, um look yeah, all that said, and I forgot where I was. But, the Adidas uh, shoot. The Adidas shoot, had, right? Had uh, 300,000 followers. It was interesting kid, yeah. to see, like, what people turned in. Right. You know, and, and some of these are the louder voices, and, and obviously, you know, it, it was there kind of from every, everybody turned in something, but, you know, sort of just even having to curate one picture from everybody, it was interesting to see out of what I gave them to shoot, which is anybody from Clark Kent to um, Wiki from Rack. Um, Rat King to like a million and a half dollars worth of cars from PCNY, you know, under the bridge in Harlem. Like, what did people choose to document? 
you know, it was like, you know, you just learn sort of different people's vision. And, and certainly I felt like I could, you know, now rank order them. But it was interesting to just see what people turned in, you know, and like and what like hit my soul based on what I know that I would have shot given that same opportunity, you know, and you put yourself and rank it in that thing. And, you know, certainly I was like, OK, right. Again, this is going back to like a photograph being almost a window into the soul of the actual photographer and not necessarily the guy who's who's be in front of the camera it's the guy who's behind it. Right. It's like, why do they choose to document this? And how and people think, you know, what they choose to pay attention to and what they tweak out on or stay in or sit in. You know, a lot of people obviously felt, you know, because of the generous support of Adidas, like that they were going to like, OK, I'm just going to shoot the shoes. Right. Like because the shoes are dope, you know, like and comfy and amazing, you know, but, you know, again, I'm, I'm rocking the, you know, the Virgils on my feet. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not beholden to any brand. I just speak sort of kindly about people that are kind to me, but, right. you know, in this moment, it's, um, you know, it's very interesting to see people's perspective and it's constantly, um, fascinating to me to see who, um, sort of rises to the top and for what reason. And some of it I can't figure out. <laughs> and some of it's just not for me, and I understand that too. And I kind of, I kind of move into more of a music conversation now, right? You know what I mean? Like some of it's just not for me. You're that, and that's okay. I mean, you know, some people don't want to listen to the DOC or Big Daddy Kane every day. I do. We're seeing a ton of brands, especially fashion brands, that are switching over and, and shooting what their lookbooks or their collection and film. Oh, film, yeah, um, making and just a lot of, you know, there's a a, a ton of. Um, you know, I would say I would call them Instagram photographers that are shooting in film too, sure. who document a, a lot of music acts, whether on the road and at concerts and stuff. But I want to know, like, what made this art form come back? Was it just a matter of no one was using it, so people were jumped back to it to be different? Yeah. Um, or no, I don't think it's about being different. I mean, I think look, it, you know, where I was going again is like cameras are just tools. Right. You know, it's like really about your vision, but. I do think that there's something um, about the process of shooting film and there is a patience and there's like um, a method to shooting film that it's not just like they say what spray and pray like just keep on and shooting you're bound to get something it's like shooting with the law of probabilities I think people want to stop and consider have a moment pick it the grain is just different you know there is a feeling to these lenses but it, it goes back to one thing, and this is a, a thing that I constantly reinforce. It's like just your knowledge of your craft, right? Once you know what you're doing, somebody could put any camera in your hand and through your vision, whatever that happens to be per individual, you're going to be able to deliver something that is of quality, you know? It's like for me, it's most exciting to like... <laughs> lock myself in a room, tape up the thing so the light isn't there to load eight by 10 sheet film to then bring it out on a Deardorff eight by 10 field camera and shoot like Avedon did the whole book in the American West. That's exciting to me because that's like process and method and knowledge. And, and, and I think that there's like, there's a meditation to that in some ways, you know, rather than just like show up, get a camera and just shoot until, uh, okay, I guess I got it. Like, right. We came from an age and, you know, photographers who shot primarily film or during that moment can can certainly back me up on this. But there was a time that you needed to know that you had the shot. There was no like, oh, look in the back of the camera. Look, it's right there. We got it. Oh, and then I can tweak it and then I can digitize it. We did it all in pre. We did it in advance. We walked in knowing what we did. It's like a sprinter visualizing running down the track photographers visualize the whole shoot if everything went your way which it never did <laughs> especially you would get rappers, for sure, right? the following shots yeah you know and then they show up seven hours late and you get 12 time minutes on somebody's watch you know snoop dogg baton rouge louisiana 1998 <laughs> no one's no 12 one's time playing, minutes yeah. five minutes with hove for billboard you know like you got five minutes you can start now <laughs> <laughs> i've been here for you five know, hours like, oh man yeah <laughs> no pressure But, you know, again, it's like those situations um, allow you to build confidence and to know what your work is about and how to get there very quickly. You know, I would say, you know, with absolute confidence, if you give me three frames, two of them are going to be good enough to be 
as good as any album cover out there if I'm doing an album cover. You know, you might blink for that third frame, but that's your fault. Like, I'm going to come up with something right away with one frame, you know. I just feel that confidence, you know what I mean? And again, other people could like it or hate it or whatever, and that's, that's just opinion. It's like liking an artist like Justin Bieber, okay? I think he's amazing, but other people are like, eh, Biebs, eh, whatever, you know? <laughs> like, totally. It's, it's all just personal opinion, but I think when it comes down to just that knowledge and being able to deliver quality work, you know, I think that that's, that's what's most important. And I certainly love shooting film because you had to know that you had the shot and you had to move on. And with art directors and managers and whatever, like, you sure? You sure you got it? I'm absolutely confident. Let's move on. <laughs> like, how do you run your set? How do you run it? And it's not a collective thing. It's your vision. They chose you and your vision to bring this person to life and, and not sight unseen. And you call the shoot. Are you brave enough to know that you have it? Like, I am every time, you know? Or if I'm not, how do I beg for another shot when the artist wants to leave? And then that might become the shot, you know? So it's just a different rhythm, I think. Um, now there's not better or worse, but I would encourage anybody that's really excited about, you know, pure photography to like come up with a concept, learn your craft, and know how to get each one of the filters on Instagram in real life. I can, for sure through printing or film or processing or cross-processing or whatever, I can get to every one of those filters in real life on film. So if you were to give young photographers a bit of advice, it would be almost twofold, right? It's knowing your craft front to back. Sure. But also knowing what makes your vision unique, what makes your perspective unique. Sure. And melding the two, right? It's and both are equally important. Right. You know what I mean? And I think both are also the second one even more so than the first in some ways of right, the first one is breaking just a down of getting you on the playing field. The, the first one is like, can you close your eyes, dream of something, and then actually bring it to life in the exact way you saw it in your head? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the gift of an artist, you know? You know, like Jose Parlo or Retina or Picasso or Rembrandt or whatever, they closed their eyes and they could imagine something and then had a skill set to execute what that was. You know, same with the great photographers, Cartier-Bresson or Avedon or Stephen Klein or major people, all very different perspectives, but that's what enhances, inspires, makes the world more beautiful, those unique perspectives. You know, I find that the first one that you mentioned of knowledge of craft, I think that that's really about... Um, having the ability to let that component of any session become unconscious, right? I can put my hand back and my assistant's note to set it so I can put it up to my face to never break whatever connection or conversation I'm having with somebody that I want to document because I don't want them to move because I like what they're doing. Like, yo, camera, camera, cool. And it's up and then I'm going. Like, it's, I never want to break the human connection to fumble over setting a camera and then lose that and the person goes off and, you know, gets on a phone call or suddenly has to pee or, you know, like I'm trying to hold moments and like curate or guide them into a place where I want them to be right, or right. that I think that they would enjoy on the back end when they see the film. First off, I'd like to take a look at people's Instagrams. Um, and see what they're what they've been up to, um, especially like a photographer, artist um, that curates their own rather than having another, you know, an artist having someone curate theirs. Um, and I saw that your parents just celebrated their anniversary, so big ups. Fifty eight years. Shout outs. Man. Yeah. My parents are are amazing. Like two painters, brilliant. Mothers from London, dads from Brooklyn. So I have like refinement and like royal. Blood way, 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 way down the line. Yeah. Somewhere I must. But uh, yeah. and it's epic. So you went to, and then you went to school out there in Ohio, went, had a radio show a little bit, did a little bit of radio work. WKCO 91.9. Oh, cool man, DJ Johnny M in the mix. Man, he's got the Take radio it. voice. This is <laughs> way better than my radio voice. Uh, <laughs> so I want to know when or how did your hood pass come in the mail? Because. because I've had that since birth, man. Yeah. That comes from dad and Brooklyn yeah. and drinking water and 
my uh, grandfather throwing bare knuckle boxing matches on Third Third Street and Seventh Avenue. That's now Park Slope and driving alcohol and prohibition. Like, you know, I, I come from you know rogue seeds in some ways. Yeah. And then the refinement came from certainly, you know, <laughs> mom. But even that, there's, ro- you know, like yeah. we're real people, man. Like salt of the earth, feet on the ground. Ask us a question, we got an answer. There's nothing precious of how I move. Although I do like to fly business class, I get real sensitive <laughs> and bougie when it comes to hotels because I don't sleep. I don't get to sleep that often. Right. And then flights because I like really enjoy my time in the air because no one can really find me except now they have internet and everybody can find me. But yeah. I, that's why I liked it. I was like, I want to be comfy because I may have to like hit the ground and start shooting. So that's, that's it. I just want to sleep. I just want to be able to perform when it's time to perform. I can never and I like really plane. fast, amazing cars. Okay. That's it. Those are my three things <laughs> Those are the, that I need. <laughs> that, that Jonathan needs. In his you want to make me happy? Send me a business class flight somewhere. <laughs> Rent <laughs> me a fast up, car. Yeah. <laughs> pick you up in a fast car. Yeah, that's Take you to it. a nice hotel. That's it. And then, but I got to be able to drive it. And then know? do it all over again. Bring me back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I asked that as like, you know, I wanted to know how, how you are able to, how you are, are able to get your subjects so comfortable around you, how they're, they do open up to you. And like you said, if it's, if it comes down to, I need one more shot because of the record label or the magazine says they need X amount of deliverables. You're able to talk these guys into it. It's like, hey, just trust me on this one. Or, you know, how were you able to build up that rapport? Or was it just a, just you being you? Well, look, I, I think as, as you go back to, you know, sort of my radio days, I think yeah. it starts with the knowledge. Okay. Like knowledge and love for the music that's instantly understood. Whether I have, you know, public enemy playing when somebody walks on set or whatever like huh okay this kid you know somebody else might be playing some drum and bass or whatever you know like right but it's like okay instantly like set the move what is you what do you want your set to feel like you know how do you want somebody to feel when they walk in is there a candle lit is there you know whatever does it smell good did you help them park their car like you know like you know we're still here this is certainly a luxury business and you know, we're here to serve the people that have everything in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? Or um, are used to maybe people just like wanting something immediately. Like, here's what I need from you. I need this from you. I need this from you. Every day there's a set of demands on people of what they have to do. And the more things that sort of hit my schedule, the more I continue to understand that if this is my life, you know, and sort of the people that take interest here and there or whatever in, in what I do or want to you know, explore it. I mean, think about somebody like Cardi B. What's her day like? You know, it's like 8 a.m. get up, makeup, 10 o'clock this interview, morning radio, into this, into that, into travel, into whatever, into a show, into a, you know, it's like you break that down and you being put yourself in their shoes. And being a mom, yeah, yeah, I mean, let alone that whole secondary life that overlaps the life of a celebrity, incredible artist, you right. know? But, you know, I think it's like putting yourself in in those shoes really, really being present for the moment, you know, like on a human level of like, yo, we're here to make something together. Like, let's make it the greatest experience. And like, I want it to be memorable, memorable because I want to be invited back another time. Like, wow, that was such a good session. Like the images were amazing. The vibe was so cool. You know, that was the best day, man. I want to get, you want to use that kid again. Like that's just a, an installment of kindness to be able to, be invited back, you know? And and I think that that's um, really important, but I I know that the psychology is a big aspect of why I instantly can break something down, you know, and break somebody down. Like within five seconds, I'm I'm in. If I wanna get in, I'm there, you know? And very few times have I not broken that guard. And I can can name, I could, (laughs) won't, name the people that I couldn't couldn't break down, you know? One of them was ODB, but just because he was in like a But I still him. broke him down. I still, yeah. Yeah, who's, I still yeah. got an extra shot that I wanted of him in a white suit. Yeah, you know what I mean? When he started telling me how to light my pictures. I was like, dude, I do, I do this side of it. You do that side of it. You do the dance. Right, yeah. yeah but you <laughs> and losing, the stance. You and the losing out to ODB is like, who's, who's actually... Who's it's like, who, can, yeah. who can wrangle that guy? <laughs> exactly. Nobody. Maybe the RZA, but even that, I would, I would ask him that question. Like, have you ever been able to harness uh, the full capacities of ODB, or do you just have to let him do what he does <laughs> and curate it later, you know? Um, 
as a white man covering predominantly black culture, how do you navigate that? Are you thinking about it? Do you feel that you're, you're obligated towards something? Again, is this even like something that crosses your mind when you're working? And I hate to bring I it to race. I think that, no, 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 no. I have no problem <laughs> okay. with, with this question sure. at all. You know, and, and I think that it's about sort of understanding your purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, I chose to create within this culture, right? Because I was totally moved at the core by the messages that were being told, you know? And that was it. Like, I have to know more about this. What is this about? Like, and what is my contribution going to be to elevate it or contribute my puzzle piece to the, the success that I wanted to have because I want more music, better performances, more beats, more, I just want more. And, you know, and I think that as you become fulfilled in your journey, you want other people to win. And I think that shift in desire of wanting a culture to grow was really the strength that enabled it to become pop culture today. It's hip hop, we are the dominant culture. And I say we because it does encompass, you know, white kids, black kids, purple kids, Filipinos, this, that, Asians, Africans, you know, like it's Absolutely. like fully across the map. Like it's, it's about a perspective, you know what I mean? And, and I think that that's sort of, that's where I stand. It's like I want to give and I want to see myself win and within something that I love and hold it as high as possible. That's how I sort of started and and how I still am today it's like I want I'm I'm always like number two on my set because you realize you're trying to hold up that number one but I'm number one in making that session happen you know to make every everybody feel a part of it that they're all contributing that it's like we're making something meaningful together you know and I think keeping that perspective is what enables it to to move forward um I do think that there is a responsibility to be very aware. Um, look, it's it's tough with somebody who grew up where there was like almost no political correctness and you could say certain things and be like, no, that's not what we meant, we meant this. You know, like you do have to be very aware of your surroundings in general, you know? And I think now more than ever, as everybody is dissecting every single word that somebody might say, like, okay, th there's extremes to some of that, and I get triggers, and I get, I get all of this because I don't know their experience. I don't know where they came from. I don't know the information they have. But I think being aware and conscious of being a kind person in general, like that at the core and your purpose and your intention, if you can align those things. Purpose, take a great photo. Intention, be a cool motherfucker. <laughs> like, just be cool, man. Right. And, like really try and make it about, you know, not to sound cheesy, but like a loving exchange, man. Like I want to give you the gifts that I've been given and I want to see you win. And I'm here to give all that I have so that you can fulfill your dreams. And if this little piece of puzzle helps you go to that next level, I've done my job and I'm really happy about that. But, you know, we, we do have to be responsible and not errant. And I, and I do think that it's going to take some brave voices to continue to speak about that mm -hmm. because it is a very touchy thing and I think it takes somebody very with a presence of mind to respond to this question in this way and, and, and I'm not going out on any deep limbs or anything but just being present and aware of what's happening and, and moving with you know heartful purpose I think is what's gonna allow this to allow you to be understood and therefore able to create in a very pure, honest way and get the authentic performance from somebody else. And again, when you understand that there's no, um, you know, sort of good or bad or better or worse, like it's just your perspective on what's hot or not. And I think that that, keeping that perspective and just admiring somebody working really hard at the highest level that they've achieved, I think that's the exciting part right. and can actually motivate the next generation. If you don't like it, what do you want to say, man? Go do your thing. You know what I mean? And, you know, I'm a white boy from Cleveland. You know what I mean? I grew up cutting grass and refereeing soccer games and working in credit card services. I'm not supposed to be here. Right. I'm not supposed to be like one of the top, you know, hip hop shooters in the nation having achieved 300. I'm not supposed to be here. Right. You know what I mean? But I chose to be here. 
and I relentlessly chased my dream as crazy as it seemed and still seems in some ways. But I'm here, you know, making meaningful contributions. And I think, you know, that should give a lot of people a lot of hope. So before we close out, I think a lot of people were asking in the office um, your camera suggestions or like what you're shooting with. Um, we do have a lot of photographers here. Even young man is handling sound. Eddie Lee over here is uh, Check. one of our <laughs> in-house photographers here. So could you just give us a rundown of like, you know, what are, you know, whether you're out on, um, you know, shooting something for the magazine or you're out on in the field or in your studio like what are what are the yeah, what yeah. are the weapons yeah the arsenal man the manion arsenal um i'll post a picture when this thing drops man too and it's literally okay. a picture of all of my old film cameras organized neatly as as you would you the know grids okay so kindly do man yeah. or, or we could do a new grid and figure it out but you know um my workhorse when i was shooting film and I'll break it down to the two kind of worlds, but it's uh, Pentax 6.7, okay. medium format, 120 um, film, uh, Roloflex, square format, you know, sort of uh, look down into the top of it or you can get the rangefinder. Um, a Pen FT half frame. Um, I have a Leica M6. Um, I probably have, I don't know, maybe 12 Pentax 6.7s or 6.7.2, like in combination. Uh, the Deardorff 8x10 field camera is sort of an homage to Avedon. Um, I would rock, but, um, you know, I have box cameras with Zeiss lens. I have a Minox with a little mini Minox flash. You know, my favorite camera of all times is a Polaroid 195 land camera. Um, they don't make the film that I love, the 665 Polaroid that gets a negative and a positive, which is what I showed at Mana. But um, that's my favorite of all time. I probably have... I don't know, eight or 10 of those things. Like we had to have these as cameras in rotation. It's not the amount, it's the need for the amount. It's not like I just have all these cameras, I have 50 cameras, look at how glamorous my life is, you know? <laughs> like I have many leather bound books. It's like you know, I have many photo books, but they're all references to inspire me. You know, the cameras were because I shot like a maniac and you got 10 frames per roll. So we would have eight or 10 of them lined up on the counter, five with black and white, five with color. When you had to choose what you wanted to shoot, like, give me a roll of black and white. I like this in black and white. You were making those decisions in real time versus like, oh, let me just light room color correct and thing and drop the saturation and add the contrast. And, you know, like, totally. you know, that wasn't about that at, in that moment. I was one of the last people to convert um, to digital because I just, I had a great process and flow and, and a sort of a dance that I would do that just I felt good about. Um, and I love the quality of the lenses and film that I was shooting that I crafted, you know, sort of during that time. Um, but I shoot now a Hasselblad uh, H5X with an IQ250 back when I'm shooting like an album cover, like a major one. And, you know, it's uh, it's tough because I don't love it, love it, love it. <laughs> like right. it is it is the closest to having a familiar flow um and again it just could just be that i haven't like spent that time with it because i'm shooting and renting cameras as i need them you know the systems are, are advancing so quickly that for me to go out and buy an eighty thousand dollar system with all the lenses that is like obsolete in six months until they deliver the next one that i want i'm just like i'm just gonna rent it i'm gonna rent it i'm gonna find the flow i'm gonna find what works for me but you know, that the Hasselblad with the, you know, the IQ250, it works, works for me. You know, I still infuse film. I mean, I did a whole, you know, eight by 10 job, um, you know, recently. I still bust out a couple of rolls of six, seven when I can, but it's always kind of a camera in rotation. Um, I have a 5D Mark III that's sort of like, hey, we got to shoot these shoes and post them on Instagram today. Like, okay, let's do that. Like, so it's, you know, and I, and I like the video capabilities of it. You know, I'm, I'm waiting um, uh, for somebody sort of to blow my mind in the camera world to, to create something that I love. Like, I like the Leica S2. I shot that one for a while. I really thought that that was going to be my go-to because it was most like a Pentax 6.7. Um, but it, it, uh, I found that it didn't operate as I needed it to relying on autofocus versus my own eye to focus it missed it front focused or back focused in daylight 
and I shoot too much daylight to allow that to happen. In studio, I found that it was like the answer. I was like, oh, I found it, you know? Right. But it and wasn't... then I did a job in New Orleans for like nine days um, with Most Def, or Yasin Bey, at the, you know, at that time, Most Def. And, uh, you know, and it was, it was, I would miss it, you know, like, but only afterwards do you realize like, oh, it's a little out, right. you know, like, and not enough that anybody would know the images would still hold. You could print it as big as a wall. It'll still be there. But, you know, um, the Sony, uh, what, A7R or A7R2, I think they yeah, are, too, you yeah. know, like I've tried both of those. You're on three. He see he's better than he's got better cameras than me, man. <laughs> the whole world has better cameras than me, but it, it's fine. But you know what ones work it's for fine. you are the ones that you. I know the yeah. ones that I like, and yeah. and look, it's also like if I want like a ton of grain, you know what I mean, and I want them to just be explored, almost like pixelation, um, you know, or pointillism, you know, if you're going into art. But like I would use the Pen, Pen FT half frame. It's a 16 mil frame, and you blow that thing up, and it just like bursts. It's. You know, so it's it's also knowing how to get to that end result. But I, but I find so much can happen in post, and I love I love the digital um, sort of world for its uh, flexibility and its um, uh, I guess ability to explore different kind of colorways and color shifts, and like I really like dialing in sort of odd, strange color. Still with my sensibilities, but like that's been one of the joys of shooting digital is to jump on Lightroom and dial in something that feels like something cool. Something you know? different, right, yeah. But, um, but again, like mentioning all of those tools, it's still the eye that does it, you right. know? Like me on my iPhone 7, I'll go up against anybody. You know, like let's go. And again, like, I don't even have the lace technology. I gave that, I gave a 10 away. <laughs> like, so it's, uh, yeah, again, I, like, I, I'm excited. I would be excited to find something that I'm like, wow, yeah, that, that's incredible. That to me was the Pentax 67 and the 195 land camera. Lastly, I want to finish up with what's next. Um, before I don't even know if we recorded it. Maybe we'll be able to slot it in. But um, you were you were talking a bit about you know this past weekend at a uh, Mono Contemporary, right? And you also had something at the Compound. You kind of had this almost Epiphany Sunday, right? Can you tell tell me a little bit about that? Like what's what happened sure. Sunday, and then like you know what are you looking forward to going forward? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting uh, you know sort of moment right now of reflection mm -hmm. you know i was always the shooter that just wanted what's next i want's next okay cool I did ludicrous incredible shoot cool what's next okay i gotta shoot pastor troy this week okay knock that out great all right what's next what's next you know and i never really stopped to take it all in except for like building out portfolios like okay how do i make a story out of what i've shot in order to present to the next artist to get the next job you know but, but I did know that the purpose was getting a body of work that was like unparalleled in hip hop, like photo for photo, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put something on the table, man. You know, I only really missed um, Pac and, uh, and Big L as far as like gaps. You know, like obviously there's an entire new generation that I'm really excited about spending time with. You know, it's like I'm not sort of like, ah, whatever for these kids. Like, ah, give it all back. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to know what makes them tick, too. Like, and I think that that's an exciting sort of thing to kind of explore. But um, I know now that I need to take a deep dive into the archives in order to finally give one definitive, like, book of hip-hop over the last, like, 25 years. You know, from Biggie on stage in 1995 at the Palladium to Reasonable Doubt to the DMX stuff to the Ja Rule to the Nelly in St. Louis to Snoop in Baton Rouge to Dre to this to this to this to Aaliyah's last photo shoot to, you know, the things. It's like, how do you make a 200 page book that's like, wow, yeah, that feels like what I understand the last 25 years to be. And I think that that zone of 25 years covers about 80 years of human beings. 
if you look at the people that were like on and established then or, you know, their older uncles who, you know, that's 20 years before me. And then there's a 25 year period. And then there's like this new generation. Like I've started to celebrate 20 year anniversaries of every album cover that I've ever done. Started with Reasonable Doubt. And now it's this and 17 years of this guy or 18 years of that. Like I was prolific between 96, 7 and like 2000 and floor. Like I was relentlessly shooting, you know, because it was about generating the work, you know. Um, so looking backwards, you know, I've made significant contributions to many books out there. I'm, I'm honored to make those contributions. But now it's sort of like single voice, one voice. Here's what it felt like from my perspective. Here are my choices of what I wanted to put out there. And uh, it's a daunting task to think that I'm going to rip through all these boxes and rip through contact sheets and then mix it with the digital work that I've done. But, you know, I'm up for the challenge. And I think that codifying the legacy will then lead to getting out to touch people and tell the stories in many different ways. Um, and also to be able to kind of like figure out what people want. You know, a lot of people are like, man, you got to do merch. It's like, okay, it's tricky sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of moving parts. It's not just like, take Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt and put it on a t-shirt. Like, okay, we got to talk to Jay first. Does he want to do that? This, and then a marketing, and a thing, and a thing, and a thing, and who gets a piece, and who, you know? Right. It's, uh, it's not easy as just slap it on and keep it moving. You can do it, but you might get some phone calls afterwards, you know? Before, yeah, before you But that's what I want to do. Yeah. I want to be able to give this back to the people, all of it, all of it, you know? And not as like, thank you for, you know, being behind me. You know, to many people, yeah, thank you. I'm grateful for anybody that's ever given me an opportunity, a job, and has been loyal to me, and there's many, many. Um, I wouldn't be here without that trust. Um, but now it's like, how do I push all this back in and, uh, and give the people what they want? And you haven't done a book before at all, correct? I have, again, like I did Hip Hop, A Cultural Odyssey. Okay. There's probably about 60 pages of that book that's okay. about maybe 250 pages that are mine. Um, Hip Hop Immortals. Um, there's a Vibe book. That's, there's, contrib there's always contributions right, right. to almost every single book. Sure. Oh, but, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. But you know, I sort of like you know, pull back, but I do not have my own, right. you know, sort of delivery. And it's, it's overdue. I mean, I should have done it at 20 years. And I probably like went in like, I'm going to do a book. And I probably have an interview from about six years ago that's like, I'm working on a book right now and I'm going to deliver it. And then the year afterwards, like, yeah, I'm working on this book, man, really diligently. And I wasn't. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think 25 years. And then years the next year I wasn't either. But yeah. I probably said that I was. But yeah. like literally this time, Mana Contemporary has become now the landing place for me to close the doors, to get really quiet and to really do the work. So you tell know. us a little bit about uh, Mana before we close out. Sure. Because um, you just moved. This is I just new, moved. New so studio space. I had a studio in Gramercy Park that, as I mentioned, began with uh, Kanye in 2003. Right. Um, I did some amazing shoots in there from uh, D. Wade to Luda to Fat Joe to, you know, a lot of people came through there. You know, Bun B actually was a session that closed down the studio 10 years later because they sold the building. Trilogy. Investors kid Trilogy. Super duper OG, man. Uh, he's a quality human being. Yeah, I've met him before. He's really, really wild, nice. decent human. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that, that shut it down. It was 10 years. It was a decade. We threw a big party, you know, but that was just, that was a box in which to create. And I felt like, you know, the universe gives you these signs and like kicks you out the door. Like, I mean, they sold the building. It wasn't like, oh man, I can't hold it together my life. Like, sorry, I lost it, everybody. It was like, right, yeah, no. damn, okay, I get to get a new box. Like, okay, let's figure out what, let me drop some anchors. Let me get rid of some stuff. Let me purge. I went back into my home as I started, as I sort of grew out of that and then grew into this new space. I simplified to go back in and I just found that I was on top of myself. I've been there for five years, totally. you know, also in Gramercy Park. And I was like, I need to breathe some new air. I need some new energy. I need some new things. So yes, I'm man. now reverse commuting to Jersey City, which I never, ever <laughs> no. would think like, wow, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. However, they convinced me that, you know, it was going to be um, something great. And the people that are in that building um, from the Irving Penn Foundation, 
to Sante Durazio, to Gary Lichtenstein, to, you know, the Florence Academy of Drawing. Like, there's so much creativity in there. Um, and again, I, ha I barely even scratched the surface of trying to figure out what's there. Right. But even already, there's been uh, the understanding that, that we can build a community of, like, you know, people that are having these creative conversations and exchanges. And, uh, but really, to me, it's, it's about closing the doors, using this giant wall to, like, lay the whole thing out. Like, what have I done? And how do I deliver the most uh, incredible book that I can possibly construct in the next, like, three months? You know? And, and just to archive. Like, take a look at the journey. Like, and how do I go beyond that one book? I'm not just like, let me do one book. It's like, let me do that. And then let me, like, just do a, a random, like, zine of Aaliyah's last photo shoot. Is that hot? Do people want that? Go to my Kickstarter page. Yeah, and da -da -da -da. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah you mentioned merch. And I might Absolutely, do that. Yeah. Like, yo, what do people want? Totally. Like, that's what I'm asking everybody that I come in contact with. And it's a couple of things. They want to know the answers of how to do it. So I'm going to be lecturing. And, and I do that now at SVA and ICP and... You know, I want to teach. I'm destined to teach. I'm going to do portfolio reviews. Like, I want to do that kind of thing where I'm having real conversations, not likes and swipes. Like, stand in front of me. What do you want to know? I have an answer for you, you know? And, uh, and I think that's, that's exciting. But then it's really, like, getting really, really, really organized and super, super tight so I know where everything is. You know, that's going to send me down many avenues of exploration creatively. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I imagine you've been working so much, so hard for so long and so con continually that you've never had a chance to really look back to see where you've been to then kind of picture where you want to go and like, you know, where's the next chapter? Yeah, where's the next, the next 25, 25 years, years right? look yeah. like, man? Absolutely. You know? And uh, and that's exciting. And I, I I barely, barely feel like. <laughs> even after 25 years, like I, I barely feel like I've started right. like, wow, there's so much more to do. Like, and it's crazy, but I think that the, the artists that are really in it for the long haul, is like, wow. Okay. 25 years important. Like if I stop now, the legacy is intact. What, what I contributed to, um, to hip hop, reggae, R and B, soca music, whatever, is meaningful contributions and and countless examples of 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 great work. I'm super super honored. But now it's sort of like, okay, what I still want to be fulfilled creatively. What's next? Could there you know? be the American West version for that Avedon did? But yes, you know, you now documenting 100%. real like not to say rappers and musicians and singers aren't real people, but yeah, you going out there, 100%. right? Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's that book is done in my head. Okay. And anybody that knows my interests knows where it will be accomplished, you know, um, and probably you know a number of places. But absolutely, I mean that's. But I think here's the thing. I think with that, it's like finding um, people to um, put the greater good of inspiration and making something beautiful before kind of their own interests or like people that are investing in nonsense, like, yo, invest in people that really want to make something, you know, and be a part of that. And, you know, there aren't very many patrons of the arts as there were sort of maybe back in, in <laughs> Renaissance days where like Kings would say, look, here's a bag of gold doubloons. You know what I mean? Like go paint this chapel for me, you know, like, right. You know, but it's I like, be, I need to be God in that chapel though. Just so you know. There's yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's there's cool. always like... Okay. Like stick your finger out and touch the, the mere mortals. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, no problem, man. That's done. Um, but uh, that's what I... That's the hardest part yeah. right now. You know what I mean? It's, it's not the ideas or the generation, you know, of them. It's like, how do we get this done? How do I go to this island for six months to just work and create something that's like, oh my God, the work you did down there was special. That will have the impact that Avedon in the American West has now on inspiring generations of people every day, every single day that book is sort of used as a reference of like quality interaction and execution. Certainly. You know, how do I do that book? 
for 25 years from now. Like, I'm not here just for right now. I've never been, I've been in the moment and present for it, but I always understood that it would have meaning a year, five, 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Like, these are the definitive images. And I don't have all of them. There are many definitive images that a lot of people who took the time, you know, have delivered to the world, but that's what's next for me. It's like, you know, I wanna create, I wanna do my own ideas and not just say like, hey, you have this artist, boom, what do you wanna do today? And you go do the day and then you turn in the, in the work and it's great and it's cool and that's, that's a great day at the office. Me creating is, is a phenomenal day. I, I don't say this with any um, sort of, uh, um, I don't say it in any kind of way that's sort of like, eh, it doesn't mean anything to me. You know, like it does every time out. Every time I have a camera in my hand, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in my mind. You know, but I want to do it every day. I want to go on uh, a much richer, deeper journey to pull out experience of like a place, you know. So I think it's just the nature of how I work needs to change. It's not like, here's a job, you do the job, you give a drive, you leave. It's like, man, no, I'm going to go, I want to move in, I want to live with, you know, this experience or this place or these people and, and have a moment, you know. But, uh, but I know that it starts with giving this work back and, like, not closing the chapter forever. I have such great relationships with people, but I need to, like, cool. This is what I felt over 25 years, and this right. is what it felt like. And there might be chapter one, volume one, volume two. There might be individual imprints, but, you know, that's cool. That's the look back, and it'll continue, and maybe I go on a deep dive with this new generation. But, you know... I have a lot more that I'd like to say and explore. So I want to get your thoughts on licensing out your photography or, for that matter, people using, using your photography without licensing it. I think that's super prevalent, pervasive in uh, the blogosphere and the internets nowadays. Um, but, you know, I think I, can, I, think I kind of know your answer, but um, let me kind of frame it, right? When when do you know to, to have that battle? Yes, obviously, if someone's using your work and using it for uh, monetary reasons, you know, that is your artwork. You deserve to have say over that. But there's other instances, um, like we're recently past artists, young rappers, um, that don't have a lot of images that depict them, um, or a lot of great images. They're you know, uh, you know, 20 something year old, right? Um, Images are floating around that represent who they are. There's only one or, one or two or a handful of them. So a lot of photographers are fighting for, for that image. When is that image no longer yours and for the people? You know, do you, do you fight that battle or I guess? Yeah, you fight. Yeah? Yeah, you, you fight the right battles. You know, like if you go to the Harvard Law Review, you know, and again, I have no beef with who I went after. I just felt like I needed to stand on my, my principles. But Harvard Law Review, Mannion v. Course, you know, they did, they used an image. They pitched me for a job. They used an image that I shot of Kevin Garnett, who's an unbelievable subject and a great man. And they bid me for the job but didn't award me the job. They took that image, copied it exactly flipped it, turned it black and white, put it on 250 billboards around the country. Like, you can't do that. Like, this is the original art. This, like, we, you know, we don't get enough to just allow things to, like, I would just let them slide. You know, like, Coors probably needed the dough. Like, Fair, yeah, yeah. no, man. Yeah. Like, yo, we're doing this at editorial budget of, man, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks total. F oftentimes putting in our own money to make the image that we want to make like yo we bleed for this man you know and and it was I, I stood my ground based on the fact that I wanted to give an example because I was so clear that this was this was out of bounds right in using it copying it exactly not even giving me the opportunity to do it you know and I was like look I can't stand for this. It's not what, you know, I'm going to stand my ground as one of the louder voices of, of photography and hip hop photography at the time to give an example for every other photographer to go to, to say, but in this case, this went this way. So in essence, like 
not changing copyright law, but giving an example that photographers who have their work taken, uh, repurposed or whatever to go to, you know? And again, I have no, there's no beef. It's not that I, you know, sort of, it's, it's not like that. Um, knowing your worst, so but it was, about, yeah. it was, man, let's, let's start to educate the world on, you know, what we'll stand for. You know, people that take my images and repost them on Instagram, if I post something out there, I'm willing to kind of let that go in the capacity of it becoming the people's. Like, this is the people's image now. I'm going to put this out there. It belongs to the world. It belongs to the culture. Everybody has a story, and there is an ownership of that image based on your own unique connection to it, whatever that might be. I posted an Aaliyah picture. My Aaliyah pictures are posted constantly. But it's like, oh, baby girl, and this is an example, and da da da. And I loved her music, and she got me through a certain time in my life, and da and da da da. Phenomenal. Have at it. You know what I mean? It's, it's when you are monetizing it and just using it as a template for your own craft. Like, more than anything, I just want people to have their unique vision. Like, no, what do you, I said that. You're just saying what I said. Like, don't do that. Like, what do you have to say? You know, like, you don't have to do the same thing that we did. Like, yes, it's homage, it's a tribute, it's whatever. Cool. Thank you. Super glad that you liked the work and that it resonated based on the artist or the moment or the creative execution of what we did, you know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's tough when someone just takes it like, I like that image, put it on a T-shirt, flip it, make it their own. You know what I mean? And, and again, that's also delicate ground to, to tread on because, you know, there are certain people that are just, and, and I'll break it down like this, that are like outside of any ability or contribution to the benefit of, of a certain photograph, right? That are just like, I like that picture of Lauren Hill. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. I have nothing to do with that image except for the fact that I like it and I feel like I can sell it and I sell it. And you make all this money and, but you're really taking money out of Lauren's pocket, my pocket, whatever, whatever. And like, I can't feel good about that. Like we can't, that's not the way this goes. You know, there are rules and regulations to licensing images and there are parameters that should be upheld. And you, if you're going to quote unquote pay homage, like come to us and tell us most artists would be like, yo, that's really cool. That's really decent of you to come to me and ask me. And that's cool. And like, Hey, kick me down a couple bucks or here's what my, my standard rate is or whatever. And then go make all the money you want in the world. Or like, let's split it 50-50. Like, this is exciting. Like, there's so many means um, of, of having, and this is the first time I've spoken about this, but this is constantly on my heart, you know? Right. It's like, there are so many means of doing a good business together and being transparent and being kind and for the benefit of the world and yourself and others. And I just feel like that's the way people should operate. Right. And somehow, like, over time there's there's different lanes of like nah 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 we just do what we want and then we'll apologize later or do what we want and like fuck yeah, what he thinks we'll wait you know what i mean like, this, like yeah and and look and it's worked for a lot of people people have made a ton of money man but like you know is that is that it yeah so, okay you got a ton of money like what are you made of man yeah there's no like, longevity in that right cool i made a shitload of money great what do you gotta say man why do i care like you know and it's cool everybody needs money everybody needs money to keep things going to do projects to give to other people to have in your pocket to buy fresh shoes like you know shit costs it's real you know right. but at the same time i think that there there are always rules of how the ogs of this industry moved and how they appreciated contributions from other people that you want this next generation to succeed and you invest in them because you're investing in yourself and your own sort of like growth you know it's like tons of photographers have worked for me i think if you ask any of them like yeah that was a meaningful time at Mannion, or like yo he taught me one way to think about problem solving and i took a lot of these pieces and i had a great journey and now i'm shooting michael jordan for nike and this and this and this and this you know like and I think the people that I have pulled close and pulled under my wing, they are going to learn a lot, you know, because I'm a direct sort of like 
in the family tree. I'm of direct lineage to have it on a Mark Holman, Stephen Klein, and Michael Halsband, and like major people that have done this. And to be able to kind of impart my knowledge, you know, I think is important. But, you know, again, I digress, I digress, but it's, uh, I think it just needs to go back to, um, having real transparent, clear conversations, doing great business, saying what you mean. Uh, if you shake somebody's hand, make it, make it a firm deal. Like it's like old school values. And I think that some of that's lost. And again, maybe I sound like the old fart, but you know, like really that's, that's what allows, it's all about relationships, man. You Certainly. know what I mean? Yeah. And as much as people like look at you like, oh, you know, Manny, why are you coming after us? You know, it's like, why are you not cherishing the work that we did together as I do? I would never do that. I would never say, you know, I'm going to drop a rap album and now I'm going to spit all of your lyrics and make it my own to a different beat. You're coming after me. Absolutely. Like it's, it's a direct parallel to the music. Like you're just, I'm doing it in photo. You're doing it lyrically. Yeah, like I'd yeah. never steal your shit. Yeah, I think a lot of people that make that argument is like, oh, why are you coming after us? Like, oh, we're just making t-shirts. Oh, we're just doing this. It's like, you just want, like, you just want money out of me. It's like, no, you know, you know, the, the cease and desist or asking for money is the after part. It's you're affecting my work, my image. It's like the legacy that I've built. No one, people see that t-shirt and think, oh, did Jonathan come out with that? Like, no, he didn't make that. I wouldn't make that t-shirt or at least yet. Well, yeah, I mean, look, that's all coming, but again, yeah. like everybody has to like, you know, want to play the same game, you know, it's like this, you know, making t-shirts like, yes, people have, have got a ton of money off of that, but it's not really the get rich quick scheme. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you really do it for the culture, you know, and that's, that's where my heart would be in doing it. But I've, I've not done, you know, mer I've done merch with like Stussy and Lafayette and this and that, but you know, if I wanted to use Slick Rick, I'm like, yo, Mandy Slick Rick, I really want to do this T-shirt. Clark Kent and I did this collaboration with Stussy and Lafayette. We're going to deliver it only in Japan. Here's how many T-shirts we're making. Here's how many of this is. Here's our potential return. We're putting it all towards a flight. What do you want out of it? And they were like, yo, we want like 20 T-shirts for all the band. Great. Name, give me the sizes. And boom. And thank you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's the way you handle it. Right, absolutely. You know, and that's like, I just think a decent way to kind of be in this world. Certainly. You know, and like, I, I'm not trying to get over. Like, it'd be nice, but I would have done it a long time ago if I was on the mission to get over. But I think that people that move honorably um, in this world and in this industry are the ones that are still here 25 years later, you know, or trying to do the best that they can to do things the right way and to honor the experience that we all kind of built together you know um just do good work man just be really really clear that that would be um how i would encourage people to to move you know and it's tough i have so much more to say <laughs> <laughs> i know you're <laughs> like looking at matter. me i'm about to jump into this but whole I, other thing i actually yeah no 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 well it was my it was my post today man yeah you know there's images that are constantly um utilized as quote unquote inspiration yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i'll leave it at that man like wh what's your own voice you know and not man you know man woman whoever you know Absolutely. but like you know cool that's great you can paint a picture that you like cool what do you have to say what's your voice like i want to know about that absolutely good bad and different like or maybe that's the practice that you need to do like you know little kids can color within the lines of something that already exists like what's your voice man like and this is encouragement this isn't a diss like it i, I am at at um at a level flattered or humbled when somebody chooses to utilize an image and say like I painted this because and if people do it for the right reasons I'm the first person to repost and put it out there you know and be like Phew. you know but it's uh when it's just done like oh, I just did it because I don't know the rules and whatever and I just want to make some money off of this shit. and it's like you know all oh, it's photo we photographers are the artists too man right right it's like you know it's like just repaint a picasso and put that out there on a t-shirt like repaint a Matisse. that's what you're going after repaint right of this, yeah repaint of that like you know like we are artists unto ourselves and we create original artworks and we put them out there in the world all right so i mean i don't know if there's 
many people that epitomize our slogan of driving culture forward. But uh, Jonathan, I, I thank you for coming by. Do you have any last words for our readers, listeners, or you know, find them on Instagram? Where, what's what's the handle? At Jonathan Mannion. Simple. J O N A T H A N M A N N I O N. Boom. I expect to be at 208,000 followers by December 3rd. My birthday. Wish me happy birthday on my birthday. Damn. Day, and, uh, day before hope. Tell a friend to tell a friend. you all ready. Sagges are, Sag are ruling, man. We're ruling this, man. Scorpio season coming no, up. No, but thank you, thank you for all that you do. I mean, my final and parting words are thank you for allowing me to platform to share my perspective. Um, and I'm going to keep the inspiration coming for all of the readers and viewers and, uh, and listeners. But uh, thank you for all that you do because it is a meaningful voice within the culture that I think pays attention to the right things. So thank you. You're welcome. I mean, we're just out here just documenting, just like you. So again, guys, please subscribe, rate, comment, all of the above. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Peace.